Real quick, this video is part of a series where I'm showing you how to create your very own client portal for your business with no code. If you just stumbled across this video, be sure to check out the full playlist. And with that, let's get into this video. Alrighty, so just a recap of what we've done over the past two videos is we have imported a list of our clients and we have given them the ability for whenever they log in with their email to view their profile and then also view the deliverables, the things that we have created for them and are giving to them. They can click on them and go to the, the link and you can add in whatever other specific information associated with that deliverable that you would need in your project. So now what we wanna do in this video, the next step that I suggest you add in is giving your clients the ability to update information. So I'm gonna go through a few different things that you can, that you might want them to be able to do. So the first one is actually already done. And you'll notice this, if we go to one of our deliverables, you can, they can actually update this note. So you can say, I am updating Spelt that wrong, updating this note. And that automatically just gets, gets saved there. And so now I wanna open this again, that's there. And if we go to the, the deliverable inside of the data, you can see that that note is already updated. So this is a text, text, just a general text entry field and it's open for everyone. So this is not like editing and saving, this is just open for everything. So one thing you might want to allow them to do is edit something specific inside of their profile. So here we can see all the data associated with their profile. They have their website, they have their description. We have some other things here. And what I wanna do is let's give them the ability to update their website and their description. For that, we can go to, I'm just gonna add another button here called edit. So that's within this title component over here. And then we have our actions associated to this title component. So I'll just add an action. I can click on it and say edit. And then right now, if I click on it, it just shows this general generic success message because that's the action associated to it. But what I wanna do is I wanna change this to show the edit screen. What that does is now when I click on it, it opens up the screen where they can edit all of this information associated to their profile. So let me actually, I'm gonna rename that. I wanna be a little bit more specific and I'll just say edit profile. And then I think I want their edit profile button to be here and then website to be on the left. That's what I think. So now when we click on that, it's gonna show this edit screen. Let's go ahead and change the title here to be edit profile. And then whenever they click submit, whenever they save this information, I just wanna give them some confirmation. So that's what we can do with this on submit action. So I'm gonna add in a notification and we'll just say saved. Just so they know that their information was saved. And so I haven't changed anything yet, but now if I click on submit, it says saved. Oh, wrong button. All right, let's go back to edit profile. And I don't want them to be able to edit their email, particularly because we're using their email in other places inside of the app. So if they need to update that, I want them to reach out to me so I can make sure that that email is updated everywhere. So I'm gonna remove that from being edited. Name, eh, heck, let's give them the ability to update their name and then their image. If, we're, <laughs> if they can update their name, they can also update their image. You might want them to update their profile image. Instead of a text entry field for that, I'm gonna add in an image picker. That way they can pick an image from their computer. Let's see, image, there we go. And then this is just saying you're editing the image in two places. You don't need to do that. We'll say image there, the website they can update. And I think oh, that's good. Description they can update. And then this, the rest of this information, I don't want them to be able to update. And then one more thing we'll go ahead and do is I wanna make all of these fields required. So they can't like clear out their name and it be empty. They have to upload an image, they have to have a website, and then they have to have a description. So what that does is if they were to remove their name, they're not able to submit it. And then if we like exit out of this, it actually doesn't save any of the changes. So their website right here is glideapps.com. Um, let's go ahead and change this to docs.glideapps.com, submit. And let's see if that actually went through. So the website now points to Glide's documentation. Sweet, so that edit is now uh, working. So that gives them the, the ability to edit their profile. 
they have the, you can do something similar on this screen or for the, for these items here. If you want them to be able to edit something, you can go to collection, go to actions. And then similarly, how we have this open link, you can also add in a edit button here that would give them the ability to edit an item. Or whenever you click on this, you could just open up an edit screen. You can do that again in the actions. Instead of showing the detail screen for this item, you could show the edit screen. Those are two different screens that allow you to configure them separately. I'll let you work on that. You can do that specific to yours. You should have those tools in your tool belt now. But let's go ahead and do one more thing, one more kind of data entry thing that you might want them to be able to do. And that is to add in requests for deliverables. So they have a list of deliverables here. What I wanna do is give them a button to add. And that's really straightforward. We just click on this collection here and we come to title bar action. So this is the title bar here. You have the title, you have the search, and then we'll go ahead and add a button here. And we can just call this add. And then whenever they click on this, we want to show what is called a form screen. Form screen is just a screen that has fields for you to enter information and then a submit button. And so it just allows you to do all of the, like, the validation and, and stuff that you would typically want to do. So I think that's good. We can go ahead and click on add. And then here, we want to configure this. Remember our properties are always over here on the right. So you can see the destination sheet. This is the type of uh, data we're creating, where we're adding a row to. So we are creating deliverable, that's good. And we can call this new deliver, deliverable, deliverable. And then on submit, we'll say created, because they created it. And then what do we want them to enter in here? So we definitely want them to add a title. For their user email, we don't want them to type that in because there's, they, they would get annoyed and then also they would make typos. And we just want them to automa basically automatically associate this new item to their account. We basically want the current user's email to go into that user email because they're gonna, if, if they're adding one to their profile, they're gonna be logged in. What we can do is add in what's called a special value. So if you just search for special values and special values are just unique things. So like the user's email address, it's currently logged in. So I'm gonna click on that. And then you can see here that this is mapping to the, the user's email address. The link to the deliverable, that's something that we're gonna add, so they don't need to add that. The status, likely we would want to default to something. We'll add that in a second. And then notes, we want them to be able to add notes. And then status, we wanna make a default value. Now, there's no way right now in Glide to default a value easily. So one trick that I have is if you want all new deliverables to be a certain type, what I typically do is you can look at, you can see here, we have values from screen, we have values from user profile. So what we can do is just like a, this is a little bit of a hacky way to do this, is to add a new template column. And I would just call this idea default. And then I would just put in the idea text. And so now for whenever somebody's logged in, they now have access to this generic column that just says idea in it. And so now if we come over here, you can see we have um, this idea default value and I can point this to be the status. And so now whenever they create something, the status is gonna start out with an idea. So that's just like a, a simple way to default it until Glide adds an easier way to do that in the future. All right, and then the last thing we wanna do is let's make these required. We want them to add in a title. We want them to add in notes. And then maybe we just even rename this instead of title, just call it idea. So uh, deliverable that I'm creating, I want a new color for my website. And then we'll say notes, please consult the sun because the sun is fun. All right, then we submit that. And boom, now we have this new, this new deliverable down here that is an idea. See, it's an idea status. We have our note in there. And now year in can add in their own idea. My awesome idea. Notes, please do this. Submit, now they have their own. Now one beef I, had with, I have with Glide at the moment is I just spent all this time creating this idea form and they, if there's no collection items here, this button does not show. 
So if I go over to OpenTech, there's no way for this user to add their own deliverables. Now, likely this scenario will never come up because if I add them as a client, like they would likely have at least a first project. But I would love to have that add value be available even though there's no collection item so that they can add their own. In the meantime, if you do need to do this, you can just create a new button, have that button show a form screen, and then configure this similar to how we did the other one. And a quick way to speed up that process, if you didn't know in Glide, is if you go to a form or any, anything, you can click on a property and copy all, so that allows you to copy and paste components. So that's a quick way to get that rolling if you need to do that. And then I'll leave you with one last tidbit of awesome, is in this list, it will likely get long if they're a long-term client, you can add in, um, in, in addition to, to searching here, like we can search for idea, that would just show that one. You can also add in filters. So if you come over to options, you can add a, a show filter here. And let's just say we want to filter on status. What that allows us to do is if we go to, I guess all of these. So then here we see all of these different statuses and I can just show ones that are in progress. I can show ones that are done. And this is something that the client can easily look through. All right, so I think that's where I'm gonna end it for this video. We now have this awesome portal where our clients can see their profile, they can, they can see the things we're giving to them, and they can start to edit and interact with this information with us. And that's actually what we're missing is the with us part. There's no way for me as the company owner here to interact and, and view all of this data within the app. I haven't been given like a profile. I haven't been given a way to view all these different clients. And that's exactly what we're gonna work on in the next video. Hey, Darren here. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it helps you on your journey to create your very own client portal. If you're not sure what to do next, be sure to check out the next video there on the screen somewhere. And if you'd like to work with me so that I could help you create your very own client portal or some other project, be sure to check out that link down in the description. I'd love to chat. Thanks for watching and happy coding.